Well, we have a new guest. His name is Asher Major. He learned to play tennis at AC Melitz's home. My name is Asher Major. I love the game of tennis. I learned how to play it at Acing Artisan. I wasn't very good when I first started it. What do you think? Keep going. Keep going. But I grew to love it. And I got better and better. Sleeping with my tennis racket and ball. Yep. <laughs> the, the mother just want to say this, so they know. Mm -hmm. So I'm good. Continuing, I do have autism, but I want to say autism is just the way I think. It's not who I am. Do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. No. We're getting to know you. Do you know who I am? Tell us who you are. Who I am is a kid who loves tennis that just happens to have autism. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, do you get it? Yes. 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 This is me playing with the USC tennis team. They were nice to me. Some people like that I like tennis too. Do you like it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, this weekend marks the fifth anniversary of Stephanie's Day. It's a chance for families dealing this with autism and other special needs to find a little bit of help. That's right. But as Kate Cameron's Lita Siegel tells us, the success of the day It is a day that is truly changing lives. Every year, so many success stories, too many to count. But on this fifth anniversary, we thought we'd count a few. Like 12-year-old Asher Major, who has autism but never liked sports and kept to himself. Oh, good shot, Daddy. My daddy was doing good now. In 2012, his dad signed him up for acing autism. And it was game, set, pure love. I like playing tennis more than the whole world. It changed me now. He is so much more confident. And he loved it. Just a few success stories out of thousands. This is me playing doubles with Coach Jim and two other members of our tennis center. It was a good rally. I bet they're mommy and daddy.
You're just coming for the rally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for you. This is me four years after I started playing tennis. But wait. When did I start playing tennis, Mommy and Tata? No, when I, how old was I when I first started that? You were 10. How old am I? I'm getting confused, like, how old, like, kind of like math of how old I am. You're 14. 14. Mm -hmm. 14. Come on, go. This is me four years after I started playing tennis. This is my coach Steve and my coach Justin. They were great. There you go, let's go. Now, now rack it back. There's the back swing, contact, follow through. Back swing, contact. Okay, go ahead. Let's see it. Really? Follow through, nice. That was beautiful. Wow, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, Oh, 
Thank you for listening. So we're gonna keep uh, keep an eye out for your competitions, and when when you're competing, we'd be happy to show you on. Thank you, and thank you really for all the hard work that you've done across the country. Perseverance. It looks like you know. I feel like there's so many benefits from any sport, but tennis being crossing the left right side of your, you know, getting the brain to work better. Bye, Bye. 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 So um, we're gonna move on to our next presenter. His name is David Liston, and he is the founder and CEO. EB360, which I'm going to let you explain what that's all about, and um, very excited to learn more about um, opportunities for our kids to get involved in fitness. So come on down. Awesome. You're not, you are a coach. I am you are a coach. I'm loud. I will not need right. a microphone. <laughs> Uh, Richard, your program's amazing. I've heard about it for years, and uh, hats off to you what you're doing. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, I started, I'm a co-founder of uh, BB360, Brain Body 360, um, and it was started uh, five years ago. Uh, a, a friend of mine was Dr. Diane Davis, some of you may know her in the area, and Diane uh, knew Dr. Gwyneth Paula Fox, and Diane kept saying, you gotta meet Gwen, you gotta meet Gwen, because I'm a fitness guy. And she goes, I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do something pretty amazing together. Mm -hmm. So she put Gwen Paula Fox on together with my wife, Jody, And it took us about four months. It was actually five years ago. And for four months, we thought, let's put together our brains and try to figure out a way to create a program for children with special needs. So about four months later, we started a program. I actually started on a tennis court uh, and in a gym. And Brigitte knows Adam was one of our first three participants to join the program, and he's still with us. And what it's really progressed very, a, a very, from the beginning to where we started to where we are now has really come a long way. Uh, our energy and passion for teaching children with special needs how to perform exercises well and how it, not only in the classroom, is excellent, but how it can translate out into uh, home or at school. Um, our, our whole program is based on, there's a scientific basis behind it. If you came and watched it, you would see children especially just doing exercises like I was taking a group of you and doing exercises. And it, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, if you come see the program, we don't treat them any different than I would treat my own children. Uh, we don't let them get away with the things that they want to try to get away with, and we try to keep it orderly, and we try to keep it fun. Uh, we have a, a gym, uh, a studio, right over on Arroyo Parkway, uh, where the classes are offered uh, six days, five, five or six days a week we have classes there. Um, what we have found out after we're doing this is that time, energy, cost, and money are things that are challenging for every parent, right? And a child, a parent with a child with special needs, those costs are exponentially more expensive. Uh, so we, as we progress through this, and we've had at least uh, 40 or 50 families come through the program. Right now we have about 25 families in the program, so about 25 kids coming in there. And um, the things that we're hearing from it are pretty incredible. Not only are they getting better at the exercises in the classroom, we do a lot of crossing midline, so a lot of stuff that, you know, for tennis, coming across your body, a lot of core, a lot of body awareness, and I think the biggest piece is the social aspect. But what I'm most proud about is when a parent comes and tells me uh, that their son was able to go and play tennis, that their son was able to go and play basketball, to go swimming, or even see Adam run in the Special Olympics, or uh, Christopher play basketball. Uh, it is amazing. Our passion for this is fascinating. But with those challenges of cost, time, energy, uh, taking your child, uh, children to a therapy or going something else, what we found is we had to do something that we probably could get to people's homes. Because ultimately our goal was how can we help hundreds or thousands of families with what we're doing uh, instead of just having one place, probably similar to what you guys started in Boston, right? You started one place, how can you get it out there more and more? We tried multiple different things. And we finally came up with something called the Ball Skills Bat. Well, the Ball Skills Bag was a, a Kickstarter campaign we did back in March, which was a fascinating process of trying to uh, get people's interest in it, and it was successful. We actually reached our goal, and we shipped out over 400 of these. 
Uh, nothing hugely spectacular inside except there are four color discs because as we know our children love visuals. Uh, the curriculum, which is probably where most of the value is, uh, a pump, and um, a ball. So we get a ball. We're going to do some interactive stuff here. I'm going to get Chet moving. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Um, with, with what we've done, uh, it, the, this, pro this was a, 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 probably about a four-year process to come up with what is in this book. Uh, I'm going to have you guys break, but group, break up into two little groups and kind of take you through some of the plays. And of course what we've learned is the more a child does this, Sounds familiar with any kids, right? A child does it more over and over and over in the practice they get, they get better and better and better. But we wanted to do something that would be five minutes a day. You know, we, sound, we, we sounded like an infomercial. That's not how we went, but like five minutes a day, five days a week, you know. And that's really the truth. Uh, I train, uh, I own a company, we do group exercise classes inside the Rose Bowl. I've been a fitness instructor for over 20 years. Uh, I have two children myself. Of course, the more and more we do something, the better and better we get. But time is limited. This has been hugely successful. We have at least 30 uh, people that have done the program and gotten back to us with feedback and, and with a few questions they have and how we're doing. It's amazing what we're hearing from people all over the world. Uh, we ship to Egypt, Australia, we ship to the UK, and mostly within the United States. We're just, just getting off the ground. Our ultimate goal with the Kickstarter campaign was create the awareness, uh, use the funds to also now produce videos and more visuals to go along with the program. So this is back to 1987 and it's printed in a nice little folder and binder, but this is the best we can do with right now. But we'd like to eventually add some digital content to it as well. So one of the things we said at BB360 refer to individuals who participate in our programs as athletes. When we think of an athlete, a person who trains hard to excel in a sport, we think of how hard individuals with special needs have to work at moving their bodies with confidence in the sport of life. Our athletes not only have to train their bodies, strength, endurance, agility, but also have to train their brains, being more mentally flexible, overcoming sensory challenges, tolerating distress from difficult movements or moving their bodies at all, remembering multiple directions, processing language, etc. We believe that anyone that deserves high praise being called an athlete, individuals with special needs earn it the most. That is the core of who we are. We truly believe that. Without getting in and reading a ton more of this, um, you know, ultimately, why we created it, we wanted to address four major concerns that we observed firsthand. First, it is common for children with special needs to have motor systems that are impacted in some way. This inevitably leads to the challenges or difficulties in conducting important daily activities. Relative to this program, we noticed that many of our kids with special needs have dif dif difficulty with ball skills, right? So, which reduces their success at school and on the playground. That, to me, is the most important thing. Um, I was a teacher out of college, and to me, the most heartbreaking thing is to see when kids are excluded. Special needs are not. It's still, as a coach, I just was coaching my daughter's soccer team tonight. Uh, there was an, actually an incident in a situation where a girl thought someone was making fun of her. That is the worst thing ever. I, it really, we try to work hard to eliminate that and make it better. Uh, and really what we want to try to do with children's special needs is make them better athletes because we want everyone to be included and, and not excluded because of a disability. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's really the basis of where we're coming from. Um, the only, this only, not only impacts the mainstream possibilities, but also reduces sorely needed social opportunities and successes. These ramifications extend beyond physical skill, many times impacting the self-esteem and psychology of the child. Second, the resources, as I said, time, money, energy, and our athletes and our families are extremely taxed. Between managing demanding schedules, transportation, and how to pay for intensive services, we figured this was a good way to do it, because it's a cheap way, a way less expensive way to do it at home and create successes at home. Uh, third, good intervention is expensive and can be cost prohibitive, which can discriminate against those who can't afford it. And finally, there is a po paucity of structured exercise programs that are built upon the foundation of effective teaching strategies and psychological development, specific to individuals with special needs. We believe that you must take into account the way the body and the brain works to build the most effective and therefore functional program. I could go on and on, but there's a lot of content in there that we're going to do. But Brigitte, you're going to be one of my team captains, and oh, you're going to be one of my team captains. I have two sets here. I want to show you how simple it is. Don't be afraid to go through and look at a couple of the plays. I, I, the best thing about this, the kids are better at it than the parents. I kid you not. And what I'm going to have you do is each go to start with play one. And I want to show you the simplicity of this. And it goes all the way up to, I think we've got 40, almost 50 something plays. And what I'm going to do is have two teams of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. 
I need a little space, so I'll move these chairs out. Uh, Brigitte, your group can go over behind the table over there. I'm going to move these chairs back, and Marcy, your group can come right here. I'm going to give you the equipment. I want you to have fun with it. If you think play one, two, and three are easy, move along, try play 22. And it's simple. I'll come through and we're going to do it, but I want you to kind of see why we do the sequence we do it. We're trying to teach this ball skills back. This is catching, throwing, and kicking. Three, make three skills that we're trying to teach. So let's see, team one. There we go. Brigitte, you can get my captain over there. You haven't seen this, have you? No. Team one and team two. So who's on my team? Uh, one, two, three. I pointed to five. I don't know. I need five, five and five. I'm going to help you. So don't be afraid to move ahead to the other ones. I'm going to show you. So here's play one. I need something to read and then a couple participants. There's play one. And I'll come around and help you guys out with the visuals. All right, so there are the discs. So you start the middle right here.
top of the two discs, the closest to you starting five feet away. So here's what we need to do. So what we'll do here is five feet away, the disc is going to be a little bit further apart. We're kind of in a fast mode here. If you take your time, if you're going through the progression, play 26, follows 25. So the jump is challenging. So what we would do here is on the athlete, your mom, and what we're trying to do is work on lateral movement. Okay, so when I catch the ball, I'm just going to step over here. So we're trying to teach movement so you guys can practice that. I'm going to help them out. And then they keep going back and forth? Yes. Do you have multiple people this? No, so this is just one. So if you go to play 26, if you, if you go 1 to 25, this is easier to do. So this one is more, you have two discs here, and we're trying to do a little lateral movement. So this one is here. If I'm the athlete, and your mom, what we're trying to do is teach lateral movement with catching a ball. Okay, so we catch the ball, and then we want to step and do the catch. And this is the progression. Eventually, we want them to be able to do this, right? Catch while they're moving there. Um, it's, it's mostly, we try to do a lot more underhand. So, again, you get, if you go from play 1 to 2 to play 26, it's difficult. But when you get to the progression and always go in that order, and it, it spells it out when you can move on to the next play. Always wanted to end on a positive note. Is that cool? How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Think Good. We got. Yeah, and like I said, so it is a challenge to go from 1, 2 up to 26 because we want that progression to go. We actually want to um, do ones that are more sport specific and try to do some videos to try to teach what it's like to actually throw a ball, catch a ball. But this is a real basic. If, a, if anybody can learn how to catch, kick, and throw a ball, my kids did. I mean, this was tested on Chase and Sienna um, because this is good for anybody. And that's really the heart of where we're coming from. We'd like to, you know, break down every type of different sport, soccer, you know, and be real sport specific, uh, and actually even tennis, you know, to try out it's what you're doing. You're breaking down tennis or taking the science behind exercise and sport and try to break down different sports so that the kids can do it. And we're doing it real functionally. On the tennis court, we want to try to do it in someone's backyard or yard. Knowing that everyone's level of progression is going to be different than, in, in their growth of how they do it. We always want to end on a positive note. You can attest to that. We always want our classes. So if a, if a kid owes, we call him, comes into our class, and um, we sequence our sets in uh, five segments. A lot of the kids love visuals, so we like to use a board. Um, and we do five, five eight-minute sets and a 55-minute workout with two minutes rest. And the sequencing of that, the kids know when the set's going to end. They get their two minutes rest. And then we'll write on the board when we're done and we do visuals. But it's really cool. It's, Nothing more than what you're doing at home, creating the structure. We're just doing it in an exercising situation, and we try to make it fun. Uh, and we're very aware that, you know, with time and energy, not everyone can come to us. And this is where we're headed. Our, our goal is to try to help thousands, not just uh, 20 or 30 families in the Pasadena area. So you have, does one instructor go to the home, or do you send out the kit to the family and they do it on their own? Yeah, we send it out to the families. So we've made some adjustments because we... now, or ordering is very comfortable? Yeah, you can order them through... Uh, uh, be, uh, BB3, I didn't bring any cards. Oh my God. I came from the soccer field. I'm hot and sweaty. Yeah. Uh, but it's um, BB360training.com. Or BrainBody360 Pasadena. I guess now you just Google it. Well, you'll find this. Now, I work with some kids that have physical disabilities. Like, one arm might work and the other one might not. So how can you adapt for those kinds of kids that are not bilateral? Well, we're, we're aware this may not work for everybody. Yeah. So we are aware of that. It is not... It may not work for everyone, but if you do, so I can't answer that knowing the, the different disabilities of each child. I do know that it, 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 there's a great, a large part of, uh, part of the population that can succeed with this, okay. for sure. So, um, you know, it's a trial and error type thing. I think we probably, we know the capabilities of what our kids can do, right? Yeah. Uh, any other questions? I just have to say, yes. my, my son is autism, not autism. Oh, I have a video of Adam on my phone. I should yeah. show. I have one that I can do. Oh, send I send you a text. I you could up. not skip, could not hop, could not jump. Um, and I, remember I have great stories. I hang on to somebody, and he, had, he has visual uh, depth perceptions. He can do it now. And I was like, Oh my God! I, I, should, I wish I had that video cute. I have a little video on my phone. Of oh my God! If you guys know Adam, I just love Adam. Oh yeah. He is. I mean, I love all of these kids. I really do. So Adam would literally, we would try to walk him on a balance beam. So this little balance beam, he would have to hold my hand. He held on for dear life. We wanted Adam to jump up something three inches. Now, on the video I sent you that day, was Adam was jumping 12 inches. This, like, you know, one of those, uh, those Reebok boxes. Literally jumping over them. Cueing. And he can't even run. Usually it's like, you do one, two. Yes. Right? You don't do it together, so. 
And, and he, he's a testament to of coming literally, uh, I mean, let's see, he's probably been there three or four hundred times over a four or five year period. And, you know, it's amazing. And there's plenty of other stories like that. Yeah, with him also he had a lot of rigidity. He had, it was just, it was helped a lot. Yes. Yes. It's, and anyway, I, we love what we're doing. I'm sure just like you guys are doing. Right. Our goal is to try to help more people. Yeah. Uh, how we're going to get there with, um, you know, families of our own and other jobs. You, know, you know, there's other stuff we do. But we're real passionate about it. And if you know Dr. Gwyneth Palafax, she's our business partner. Um, and, you know, we just have multiple sprouts of where we want to go to try to help people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where we're at right now. Well, your energy is kind of like on par with, with Gwen, so. Oh, you know Gwen. Okay. <laughs> you know Gwen. You see what Gwen and I, you, if you know Gwen, if you know Diane Danis, it is really, yes. yeah. So if you know the gang, I'm sure it's a small community here. And you can see why Gwen and I get along well. Yes. Yes. And, uh, any other questions? But bb360training.com if you want to take it up. If you want to come by and have your kiddos try a class, feel free. Uh, if you want to come by and observe, and Gwen can kind of break down the brain science a little bit more than me. I'm the exercise guy, she's the brain. Uh, but I, I'm understanding a lot more of it now. And yes. Is there a schedule if, if I go on your website? Yes, it's classes? all on there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just you can send me an email and come by and check out a class. But when you say come by, where is that? We're on uh, 990 South of Roy Parkway. So we're right here in Pasadena. Is that, is that, you said a tennis court? No, I'm sorry. We started at a tennis court. Uh, were you there when we did a tennis court? Didn't know. No. Was there a picture? That's right. Yeah, it's not it's on a flyer. flyer and you don't have yeah, it's, it's in the corner of Clown Arm and... Uh, what uh, kind of facility is it? Oh, beautiful. You walk, you, it's an 850-square-foot 800, room. A, a room, a school, it's indoors. Yeah, it's a, we also, it doubles as a yoga studio as well. We got the space for BB360, and it's also a yoga studio. So it's a big, open room. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, very close to Blair, is it high school? Yeah, it's right around the corner from Blair. And then you have a, like a group class there? Yes, they're all group classes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so you go up to the website, shoot me an email, and if you want to come by and observe a class, or have your child try a class, please, that would be fabulous. Okay. Yeah, it's fun, we love it, and you'll, you'll see it's, that. It's all ages, right? All ages, we have uh, 6 to, what, I think, 23, 24 years old? We don't have an age limit. Uh, five's a little young, depending, but um, six years old. Is not it mostly old. autism, or is it different? A variety of different variety for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I actually have a question for you about tennis. Um, so um, it's it's in um, the local one here is Burbank. Is there anything? So there's, yeah, no, no. So there's nothing here. And also, no, Blair. Blair. Oh, Blair. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a. Uh, oh, there's two courts outside there. They actually have, um, oh, right. they have about five or six courts here. Okay. Esther Hendershot, she, she runs that program for us there. She also teaches the, I think, the high school. Okay. Um, and that's only on the weekends? Right? It's a, yeah, that program is Saturdays around 3 or 4 okay. in the afternoons. Is it just the three programs in the LA area? We have one in Torrance, um, we have one in Long Beach. I'm in the West San Fernando Valley. Ooh. Um, we, yeah, currently, close to, we, we were, yeah, Burbank. Burbank. <laughs> yeah. We were, we're also doing one at the health group, as a, um, you know, Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks? Yeah. You as are a, doing one, or you we were? We were, it was an after school program okay. on Tuesdays from four to five. Um, but we didn't do it this fall, but that will we'll start again in January. Okay. Yeah. And you're international now. So we have, I mean, we have, you know, we're, we have 30, about 32 locations. Um, and this year, the past 12 months, we spent a lot of time improving, making program upgrades. Um, so we didn't grow, but the plan for next year will be to add sites. Um, my goal, our goal in the next two years is to try and get to 1,000 children in our programs. And how many children do you have now? Well, we have about 500 now. So uh, nationwide? That's, yeah, nationwide. So we're, yeah, we have, I think we're in 15 states now. Yeah. What? So we have quite a, quite a big presence in Boston, New York, Florida, and then Southern California. I think, you know, the majority of our programs are there. But then we have, you know, we're starting to um, focus on the, the universities. You know, that, that really works well because the students are on campus mm -hmm. and we're just asking them to volunteer. And the tennis courts. <laughs> and then, yeah, obviously the tennis courts, the volunteers, and then they have to go and recruit the kids. Yeah. So that works very well. 
Do you know that is it Jen, Jensen Schmidt Tennis Academy? Because they do uh, a Down syndrome. Yeah, one. My son participates in that one every year. Yeah. Uh, and they come to Burbank. Yeah. Yeah. I what I came to see it um, about three years ago. Yeah, but they only do it for three days. And yeah. All day day. Yeah, that's that's. Um, I mean, it's amazing what they put on, and they travel around the country doing that, but it's just three days out of the year. I mean, I know from experience that, you know, parents need a routine, a set schedule, and so for us, you know, Burbank, you know, we've been there for about four or five years now, and it's every Saturday morning from 9 to 10. That's why I asked you if you, if there was anything else for other disabilities. I know this is more often than yeah. this, but I know for the, the tennis camp for children with Down syndrome, they look forward to this and yeah. it becomes an event every year that this is what we do. Because it's such a need, you know, yeah. I mean, not just often, just the whole special. Yeah, no, but there, there are, um, I mean, I'm involved with the, the USDA, which is the, you know, governing group for tennis in America, and they, um, they have, you know, lists of adaptive tennis programs. Um, oh. So I would, I would recommend looking there because they, they're starting to specialize in different disabilities. So, for example, teaching deaf, um, blind as well. They also have wheelchair Down syndrome, tennis. Wheelchair tennis, yeah. So they're starting to, I think the U.S. is still very far behind other nations. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty well improved. Yeah. Because when we went to Burbank, I asked, was there any coach or anybody that would do anything. It's good, it's good for eye hand coordination. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Not for him to be play play, but at least to get the exercise part. Yeah. And also that, you know, crossing that the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and I know he does a lot of um, the balance, you know, walking across different um, obstacles. Yes, but um, it's come a long way because, yeah. again, he had that visual mm -hmm. depth perception and he was kind of doing it now. What other other countries are you in? So we just started a, a first program in England because you know, I have some family there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we started a program in, in this summer. We did a pilot program for four weeks. Um, and this was a really nice setup because they, they approached a, a school nearby it's called the Queen's Mill School in London. And they turned it into sort of a weekly field trip where they would bring, you know, eight students, they would bust them to the tennis club, they would go to the locker room, get changed together, go onto the tennis court, do their tennis for an hour, and then back into the locker room, get changed. So I thought it was amazing, you know, and then we would get the teachers from the school to, you know, to help with the, the tennis lesson. Um, and so that's worked really well. And now I have a a tennis pro at this club that wants to, you know, just focus on tennis, you know, for children with autism. So he's now looking at other schools where he can do do this program. But I think it's tricky in England because there aren't that many indoor tennis courts. Um, so I think what's going to work a little bit better in England will be actually going to the schools and delivering the program in a gym. You know, you know we use portable nets and like I said, the, the low pressure balls and smaller rackets so it's you can you, you we could actually if you moved all the chairs out of the way in this room we could do a clinic in here you know with about five kids so what is the cost so we charge you know it's, it's either 10 or 15 dollars for a you know one hour class so we usually they usually parents pay up front Usually for a six week session, you know, 90, you know, 90 is the most for a six week session. It all depends if we're paying for the court time. Um, so, you know, in Boston, we have a place that's charging it, you know, like $32 an hour for a court. So, it all depends what, you know, what the setup is. Sometimes, you know, most of our programs we're paying the program director to run that program, and then the high school and college students are volunteering. Um, if we have a college campus program, it's, you, you know, they usually set up a club and everyone's a volunteer. So when we're on a college campus, there's, there's a lot less costs for us. Um, so it's just like different, slightly different models throughout the country. Yeah. Is England the only international country? 
Well, we, we're also, um, we also did a pilot program this year, and I, I haven't been there yet, but um, it's the British Virgin Islands, I think I need to go there. Um, <laughs> so, Sounds rough. Yeah, yeah no, it's, a, it's, a, it's an American <coughs> friend of mine, you know, tennis pro, who, who moved there about two years ago, and she's working at a tennis club, and, you know, she learned about AC autism and just loves kids, and, and now she's, she just started to run a program in about three months ago, so she's into her second session. So, so it's funny that we have England and the British Virgin Islands um, going right now. So. And that's and so she's it's under acing autism. So it's under acing autism. Yeah, yeah. So when it's under acing autism, we make sure that they run our curriculum. We train them, and you know the amazing thing about this is that we can you know set up a Skype call and and train someone. Um, we have this year one of the big projects we did is we. We created over a hundred really short videos of every drill that we do in our curriculum. So, you know, and that's for the volunteers. You know, it's um, you know, previously our training consisted of you know spending two hours on court and then and then running the program, which was a, just a ton of information um, to try and teach. You know, to try and teach a teenager about autism and then how we run our curriculum and how you. Work, you know, make, you know, making them feel comfortable with with a child with autism. It was a, a lot to expect, and so so for the last year, that's really what we focused on. Because there's a lot of turnover with our volunteers. You know, when we're dealing with high school and, and college students, you know, they'll do it. They usually volunteer for a couple of years at most, two three years, and then they they move. Um, so 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 the training piece, you know, is something that we've spent a lot of time. Um, working on this year, we you know rewrote all of our manuals, did these videos, and and now we hope that they they watch the videos. Here. Um, Sounds like a college course or some kind of uh, credit for something. You know. Well, the well, I mean, high school kids, you know, they get credit for volunteering. Um, and college students, um, I mean, and even even high school students, you know, we we we'll write letters of recommendation. You know, if they volunteer for more than a year. Um, with the what, what's happening with colleges, which is exciting, is that they they they're creating um, official clubs um, on campus, so so it's recognised by the university as well. There's usually a faculty member that you know oversees the program as well. So that's nice. It's a club on campus, but it's a community outreach type. Well, of it's a place? it's an official club. It, they have. Um, or is yeah. it for the college students? That no, it's have for autism. the college students. Yeah. That so. have autism. No, 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 no. It's for 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 college students to volunteer. come in and out and volunteer. So, so it, the community's coming in for the. Program. Yes, exactly. Community is coming in. Yeah. Are you thinking of Ireland, perhaps? Ireland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why? Oh, because that left to go, and I can do that. Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland. We've had a couple of conversations with people in Australia, um, and my wife is now collaborating with a, a group in Australia, and they're doing a lot of work with with motor skills outcomes. So, you know, like I said before, we're we're trying to figure out how we can actually measure outcomes. So, uh, we've been thinking about it for, for two years now, and I think it's actually going to be. Um, I think I think the best way for us to actually do it is to just video a session and see how the behaviors are changing, you know, over an eight-week session. So that's our our next project. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah that does sound good. Um, unfortunately, our last presenter canceled on us at the last moment, and I don't know why. Do we have deep? Then? I don't know. Yeah, it was um, Alicia and. Chase from the Roosevelt Pies. But yes, so we're not sure why, but on um, Dodger <laughs> <Schmidt. laughs> <laughs> That means we at the end of our program tonight, but um, yeah. Thank, Thank you all for coming.